Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Skulk, continuing by Moonlight. Which one's last? This, this, is la this is the last one, right? Yeah. <sighs> yeah, right. The... It seems like there isn't anything else to investigate on your side of the library. You head back over to Murr to take a closer look at that ticking noise he keeps hearing. I think there's a hollow space behind the bookcase. So I'm guessing that is some sort of secret uh, room, but... But you can't figure out how to open it? Or pauses it before looking back towards you. Well, I... Ha I have one more trick up my sleeve. He hums to himself quietly with his eyes closed. One more trick? What do you... Murr's eyes flick open and you're immediately lost within their depths. He gives a soft laugh, and you snap back to reality. See? One more trick. As a siren, one of my talent abilities is being able to sense things of emotional importance. So, hypothetically, if there's a secret room here, someone could have an attachment to it, right? Murr, that's incredible. He rubs the back of his neck shyly. Anyway... It seems to it seems to me that the most emotion is concentrated right about his hand presses lightly above the books as he quickly looks over them. Here. Saying this, he tilted one of the novels uh, slightly downward. Chunk. The bookshelf rattles open and reveals a dark chamber within. You are suddenly very painfully aware of how fast your heart is beating. Fumbling with your phone, you text the group chat to let everyone know your location. Murr holds his hand out to you. Shall we go in? You give hit, uh, him a shaky smile. Way ahead of you. Stepping inside makes you feel like you're no longer even in the same house. Columns stretch so far above you that your eyes are unable to register if a ceiling exists chill runs down your spine. You're starting to feel feverish. You can't tell what temperature the room can something this large be considered a room? Is. But you can feel a constant wave of heavy air pressure. It hurts to breathe. Murr takes a step backwards in shock, struggling to catch his breath as well. What? What is this place? The others arrive and share the same reaction. Joan looks like she's zoning out to, uh, to cope while, while, Mar while Mero falls apart uh, slightly. Literally. Siva's tail is between his legs, and Iris looks more pale than usual. You take a deep breath and flex your hands uh, a couple of times to keep him calm. You'll be, uh, you'll be in and out in no time. The location isn't doesn't matter. All we need to do is grab Han, Hans and get out of here. Hans, you say? You almost trip backwards. How did you... Wait, no. Who are you? Shouldn't I be the one asking that? Hans told me all about his friends, but hasn't mentioned anything about you. Well, no matter. My name is Azrael. Reference, Undertale. And here comes the introduction video, I suppose. <laughs> Judge plus jury. Right on schedule. So you're some kind of a prophet or something? Now, as far as for the rest of you, you're someone yawn. Hmm. <sighs> oh. Oh man, it feels nice to have my uh, have having my head on my shoulders again. Headless. I don't even feel like addressing whatever just uh, that just was. I feel like something like that might just be for corniness, or 
It actually has a meaning. <laughs> I don't know. Hans! Sila? Are you okay? Yeah, I'm back in one piece. Or should I say two pieces? Good enough for me. Huh? What do you mean? Hey, you! Oh, you couldn't possibly be referring to me, right? To be addressed in such a lowly manner. See his flames start to flicker red. Did you have anything to do with Meryl losing consciousness earlier? Do you mean the skeleton? If so, then my sincerest apologies. When you, uh, when you think about it, though, wasn't I just returning them back to their original form? In a way, you keeping that thing alive for as, uh, as far worse than my unconscious actions, no? Siva ignores the angel's comment entirely. First Hans, then Marrow. Listen, I've been looking for a way to blow off some steam lately. I don't suppose your mind... I don't suppose you mind if I took it out on you. He turned red. The angel gives a short laugh. <laughs> oh, there it is. I was just thinking the same. Don't worry. I'll be sure to send you back to whatever hell you came crawling out of. Siba exhales, smoke pouring out of his jaw. Fire starts uh, scattering across the tips of his fingers. Be my guest! Now the epic music starts. Within seconds, Siba engulfs by, uh, is engulfed by flame. He looks backwards. Um, he looks back towards you with sense of urgency. Grab Hans and go! I'll hold him off until you're out safe. Got it. Hans stares in awe, his own fire diminished by a sheer velocity of their uh, collision. His eyes sparkle and he mumbles something to himself about Naruto. You grab his hand and give him a tug. We need to get out of here now. Hans looks at you, confused, when some of Siva's sparks land on his arm. Ow! You okay? Hans grips his left arm uh, tightly as as it trembles, grimacing. Uh, gr grim the darkness sealed in my left arm seems to have been awakened. I feel like you're doing lots of references, but this one I don't know. Perhaps it is time to unleash my final move. Oh my goodness! Uh, no wait, I was thinking that was I, I, Iris. But... Oh my goodness! Let's go! You pull Hans with you and take you, uh, you take as you take off running. The rest of the mansion's residents trailing not too far behind. You suddenly hope that Siva will. You silently, you silently hope that Siva will make it out. Okay. Uh, retracing your steps, you slam open the same door you came from. That was a quick transition. What? You turn around frantically, looking for any sign of life. Hans? Anyone? There is no response. Where did everyone go? My, my, my. You didn't think you would be able to escape, did you? You! What did you do to Siba? Someone's touchy. You don't actually think that I would hurt any of you, do you? Your friend, the dog boy, is safe. He's just taking a short nap. Although I, I, I admit it was somewhat irritating having to deal with him. Is that true? <laughs> but any friend of Hans is a friend of mine, honest. I would do anything to make Hans happy. Let's say that, hypothetically, I believe you. If you love Hans so much, why would you want him dead? Me? Want Hans dead? I'm afraid that you're sorely mistaken. I was told that his life was reaching its end, and that I was to guide his soul afterwards. But, if anything, I've been keeping him alive this whole time. He's such a wonderful person that I didn't want him to pass on. 
Wait, then why did Hans say you were trying to kill him? He must have misunderstood. Because I've been delaying the inevitable. I became trapped in this place with Hans. Initially, there wasn't much of a problem since I would love to spend an eternity with him. But now that you and your friends have ended up here, it's become somewhat problematic since you people require food and sustenance. Well, surely with this many people here, we can break out together. As much as I wish to share the optimism, the only way to leave is for a soul to be delivered. You hear someone scoff. The only way out is with a soul. Uh, yeah right. Joan! Everyone else, you're okay! You can't help but sigh with relief, knowing that you're all in the same place. Also, I think I might have figured out um, the mystery. And to what might you be referring to? Well, Hans is a Dulahan, so we know that he is supposed to be immortal. It wouldn't make sense for someone like that to be in your on your list of people to collect, no? Okay? When I mentioned the two-tailed cat in the dining room earlier, Joan seems to have recognized it. The collar itself was smeared, but I believe that the cat's name was actually Hans. Am I right, Jill? Everyone turns to look at her. She looks away. At the time, it seemed like a really uh, to be really funny. In what way? Well, you always say that you like cats and cat girls so much, so I figured why not name one after you? Hans puts his face down in his feet. Listen, I hate to ruin such a nice moment, especially after you deduced all of that. But the truth of the matter is that even if the order was wrong, we still need to sacrifice a soul for all of us to leave safely. I can't grab the cat, Hans, while I'm still stuck in this barrier with you guys. You get the feeling that you're the only chance everyone can make it out safe. Oh look, right there, it's just lined up right above this baby ghost. End of the road. This is probably the last episode, possibly. Everyone else here, uh, here is, in some way, shape, or form, supernatural. So they wouldn't be able to uh, serve as a complete substitute because of the, nature, of the nature of their soul. Besides, of course, the resident Dulahan seen uh, since Lille, of course. The resident Dulahan, since he was meant to be taken in the first place, Opting to not sacrifice a soul at all would result in everyone starving to death. It seems as though the sacrifice will either come down to you or Hans. Well, I'm well, well, jeez. I guess I'll just pop down another slot. Top one. Maybe I. I'll do it. What? Asriel, do what you have to do. Thank you. Wait, you aren't seriously considering... You try to respond, or say any form of last words, but your body goes slack. Whew. The only thing you are aware of is the agonizingly pure silence. All senses of direction and time are lost and you can even feel your sense of self fading away. You can't tell if your eyes are open or closed because of the uh, absence of light. The one thing you can feel is that you are slowly forgetting your memories. Oh! What'd I do? No! Wait! Back! Scroll back, then. Any responsibility, hardships, and trauma seem to have never existed. You've never been in such a peaceful state before. Feel something wet on your skin. Are you crying? You can't remember why. A teardrop, a, dri a teardrop drips off of your face and falls into your body. Water. Dripping. It seems like that happened to you recently. Recently? 
an uber flashes in your mind. There was a rain dropping from the roof. You were going to the mansion, and you remember being scared at first, but getting close to Siba and Mar Mero. You remember naps outside, pranks, and playing hide and seek. You never got to say goodbye to Siba or Mero, even though you knew them briefly. You felt like you could have had such a great time together. If only you could tell them what you... You mortals are stronger than you look. You turn around to see who it was, but when you try to open your eyes, you feel a burst of pain. I'm so glad. Siba is choked up. Mero coughs awkwardly. So nice to see you. What what he meant to say is we're so we're glad you're back. Aw, I miss you guys too. Are your eyes okay? They're really tightly shut for some reason. What? It's fine. Wait, why'd you do a bunch of E's instead of eyes? It's fine. -y. It's probably just saying he's drowsy. Going, it's fine. Okay, fine. But you better not laugh. I won't. I thought we were going to be. I thought we were doing a staring contest, though. It's like the constellations are in your eyes. Really? Holy crap. That's so rad! These eyes will take some getting used to, since... Well, the color spectrum looks different, and I cannot lowly see ghosts now. Low-key see ghosts now, but... You close your eyes momentarily to steady yourself. A smile escapes your lips as you look around once more. Don't worry though. This isn't like I'm saying goodbye or anything. For as long as you'll have me. I'm always, I always come visit you by moonlight. Well, that was charming. That's a charming story. Well, I guess the credits are gonna roll, and I'll just end it off here then. Thank you guys for stopping by, and I'm, I actually enjoyed this story. It was short, it had a decent atmosphere. Yeah. I'm looking forward to more stories that I can find to record. So, I guess until I see you guys again, have a great day everyone.